So when we left off, we had Jenkins up and running, and now what we need to do is configure it. And the first thing I want to do is secure it a little bit. So I'm going to get the plugin that allows us to authenticate in Jenkins using GitHub. So that way we don't have a user database separate from all of our other stuff. Jenkins instead can use our GitHub accounts. So to do that, I'm going to go to manage Jenkins and we're going to go to manage plugins. Now this page will have once and need updates, available plugins and installed plugins. From available, I'm going to grab, or I'm just going to search for GitHub and one of the popular ones here should be GitHub authentication. So I'll just check that and I'll go ahead and install without a restart. That was pending and now it's successful and now I'm going to restart Jenkins. So Jenkins will usually install plugins, which usually involves downloading some files, and then it usually requires a restart to get it working. Because it's all Java-based, we need to allow it to suck in a plugin and restart. All right, so that is installed. We can head back up to the top level here, go to Manage Jenkins, and then we're going to go to Configure Global Security, where we can enable the GitHub authentication and authorization. So Security Realm is what we want to change here. And instead of Jenkins' own user base, we're going to use GitHub Authentication Plugin. Now notice here we need the GitHub OAuth setting. So I need to create an OAuth application within GitHub to add the client ID and secret. So I'm going to head over here and we're going to see what I do is actually use an organization OAuth application. So GitHub currently lets users have OAuth applications or organizations. I'm going to create one on the organization level. So here under Developer Settings, for my shipping Docker organization, we'll head to OAuth applications and we see I already have one for the Jenkins server that I use in production for the shipping Docker site. I'm going to register a new application for our service for hackers Jenkins site here. I'll just put shippingdocker.com for the homepage URL because that doesn't really matter. What does matter is the authorization callback. So I need to grab the IP address of the server because I don't have a host name to it. So I just access it over IP. And we actually see I have this autofilling from past times. I'll just change the IP address. But security realm and finish login are the correct URLs to use for any Jenkins install. In fact, while I have this IP address here, I'll just replace the home page URL with that as well. Okay, so I'll register this application and that's all I need. I won't add a logo or anything. But what I do want here is the client ID and the client secret. So I'll do client ID here, copy and paste the secret. And here, the only other thing I'm really going to change is use the GitHub committer authorization strategy. And that allows us to do two things. So admin usernames, I'm going to say my user Fideliper and my user shipping Docker. GitHub usernames will both be admins and Jenkins. So I'm usually user Fideliper, but I also have a user shipping Docker that I use as well. Now the organization is shipping dash Docker and the user is shipping Docker without the dash. So it's a little confusing, but it's just easier for me to do that in this case. Uh, participate in organization. We're going to do just the shipping dash Docker organization. And I'm going to say grant read permissions for the GitHub webhook URL here. So I'll allow it to send GitHub webhooks to Jenkins. Okay, so I'll save that. And I'm actually going to log out and log in. Now, however, you've not been logged to GitHub, so it already knows it's set up. I'll go to the Jenkins homepage here. Jenkins redirects to the GitHub OAuth workflow. We authorize the application. Now I'm logged in as the user shipping Docker. The user shipping Docker only has authorization to the organization shipping dash Docker. And this is why I created both an organization and a separate user. And you should too, I think. I create a separate user. I give that user only access to the organizations that I want Jenkins to have access to. Now, if I used my Fideliper user, I would have a huge list of organizations here and I wouldn't really want Jenkins to know about them. But this way it lets me set up a user that only has access to specific organizations or repositories. And that lets me make sure that Jenkins doesn't have too much access to GitHub repositories. So I made a user. I'm logged in as user shipping Docker from GitHub. I use the organization shipping dash Docker to create the auth application to let me do that. Now, one important thing to know here is that when Jenkins receives a webhook from Git, it's going to know that I push to a branch on a repository it's watching, and then it's going to try to run some sort of script. And we have to define that script in a future video. But one thing Jenkins is going to need is access to a Git repository. Now, Jenkins doesn't have any magic in how it runs scripts. It literally just plops that script on the server and runs it as user Jenkins. So the server here that Jenkins is running on right now, how I have it set up is also the server that's just going to run jobs and it's just going to run them as user Jenkins, as I saw. So any permissions and stuff applies. 
So if user Jenkins tries to pull a Git repository, like if I go over to the server that is running uh, Jenkins, which is this, we'll see that I have Git. And if I change over to user Jenkins, head to my home directory and I'll do Git clone, the URL of the shipping Docker repository, we'll see that I don't actually have access to it. So what I need to do is make sure the user Jenkins can access repositories that it's gonna be working with. So I'll make a directory and that already exists. I'm gonna use SSH-based access to talk to GitHub. Within the SSH directory, there's a known host file, but there's no SSH keys. So we need to create one, and then we need to add it to my shipping Docker user, not the organization, but the user, so that Git under user Jenkins can connect to GitHub and talk to the repositories that my shipping Docker user has access to. Now, this is another reason why to create a user specifically for Jenkins to use. That way you can lock down what access to repositories that user has, and therefore your Jenkins server will only have access to that as well. So we're basically saying the Jenkins user is going to use the shipping Docker user permissions to be able to do stuff, to be able to interact with my repositories on Git. So to make a new key, I'm just going to do SSH key gen dash T, the type RSA, bytes 4096 with the comments of Jenkins CI, which just makes it easy to see the owner of it. And I'll just append the service for hackers Jenkins CI. All right, so I'm going to do no password because this will be something automated creating that and I let it create the default file of ID RSA. So we have these files here, and I'm gonna cat out the ID RSA.pub file so we can copy and paste it, and we'll put that into GitHub so this server has access to it. So in GitHub, under the user settings, because SSH keys are a user level thing, not organization level, I'll add an SSH key. We'll call this service for hackers, Jenkins CI, and I'll just paste in the public key that I created. Okay. Never been used, but it is there. So let's head back over to the server and it'll do SSH dash capital T, git at github.com. So we're testing out the connection and hi shipping docker, you successfully authenticated. Beautiful. Okay, now for refresh this, last used within the last day. So it knows that I've used this SSH key to connect to GitHub, perfect. Okay, so let's try this out. I'm gonna back up a directory, make a new directory called temp with a bunch of T's. And let's see, I'm gonna to try to git clone again. Okay, and now we have access to it. We'll see the repository and the files are there, beautiful. I'll just delete that because I don't need it. And we are almost all set. 